Welcome to the show both feared and revered by Man and Beast, the Helios blog. Today, new drama between Sneeko and John Zerka. What could possibly be wrong here? The reason she's alone is because she's difficult. Women are not accepting the bare minimum. Women fuck men they respect. All the women who say things like, I'm strong, independent, I don't need no man, like, y'all impress me. Women just gaslight each other and say what they want to hear. I don't assume that no, any no, girl, no, that any no, girl that's believe. hanging out with you guys on a stream no, in LA, no, no, no. they're all cloud chasers. No, 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 no. Yep. We think they're all cloud chasers. Nobody believes they're not cloud chasers. It's just, I trust this Abby girl because I look at her, I'm like, I came out the womb of fresh and fit, meaning fresh and fit are bigger than Zerka. What? She would never replace fresh and fit for Zerka. So I looked her in her eye, I'm like, she's 18, right? And Abby's like, I swear on everything. And I'm like, dude, we're talking about jail time. like, And then she's like, yeah. And, uh, I, I have no idea why. I don't think she wanted to get fired. I don't think none of that. And it, and in my logic is I've never been got by Cloud Chaser Girls because I'm like, there's more Cloud here. She's with Fresh and Fit. She's not going to snake, snake everyone. She's going to miss out on all that network. She knows Zerka's not going to stick around. So she's going to stay with Fresh and Fit. I know Cloud Chasers are trying to get me if I'm alone. But if there's a bigger fish like, oh, I'm around Sneeko, they're going to go for Sneeko. If I'm around Fresh and Fit, they're going to hug. My question is... Why does he have a lisp? Around that, but she legitimately traded all that to attach her name to our names. Very strange. Like, and it's funny is this the only nice girl we've never had beef. I go on set, I see her, super sweet. Uh, I've never done anything rude to her. All I said was, "Do I know you?" When I just saw her outside the bar, because I guess she changed her hair color or something. And all you know, all the women look the same anyway. And uh, and it killed me because there was like six girls surrounding us trying to go home, and we're like, yeah, we'll get the content. Like no one's even all week. I saw them in America, believe it or not, right? Uh, and anyway, so the girls all surrounded us, and we looked at them, and then Mike is like, they're all strangers. I'm like, yeah, they're all strangers. We can only go with Abby's girls, and uh, yeah, we only trust Abby because she works in the industry. She's not gonna piss away her job. And then it turns out she's clinically. And then she totally does it. Okay, yeah. what are you gonna be doing? Um, you gonna be doing anything differently going forward? Nope. I'm just gonna get security to just ID people. Uh, I, I I know it looks like I work with Mike, but I'm really just having drinks with a buddy uh, because I hate when his chat says "Where's Zerka?" and shit like that. But I don't work with Mike. Like it's not, it's not a business contract. Actually, if I did, I'll take fifty percent of his shit. I'm the star. But uh, yeah, I just do homies favors and get them rich. But, you know, because I have a lot more free time and stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm doing my YouTube thing and all that. And uh, the crazy thing is uh, my website sales have never been higher. So that's weird. Well, what about Rumble now? I mean, you're permanently banned on kick. I, I don't know. Well, I, I, you know my, you know how I feel about Rumble, where it's like... I don't know how you feel about Rumble. I, I, you know how I feel. You know I love this free speech website, but how do you feel I, about Rumble? I see. I feel like so every time Sneeko, he has a deal. Every time he's, he mentions Rumble, he has to he has to mention it's a free speech website. I did you guys a lot, and you I never wanted like you guys to throw a contract in my face, but at least in the conversation, you know, like all the every billionaire is in a group chat with me except Chris, and it's like if I'm not even in the conversation, if Chris is not even going to say, hey, for six months, if you do this, we can maybe set this up. We're, we don't guarantee you. If I'm not even in the conversation, I brought you guys 100,000 viewers on your platform by my idea of putting Nick on, wore the Rumble hat on Fresh Fit. I did I did everything I was can, supposed to do. Can you, be upset I, at, can you be upset at Rumble for that? Or like maybe you got to analyze the situation. Do you think that you present yourself to a billionaire or to like a, a public company like this? Do you think you represent yourself as like a stable, reliable businessman? Or the crazy crash out DGen party. Okay, why? why DGen party. Is billionaire, good to us. Because that website is all degeneracy. It's a gambling no, no, no. website. They love degeneracy, right? Like Rumble, Rumble. Rumble's looking for stable. Oh, okay. Rumble. Well, let me explain. Like Rumble's a place where podcasters. It's it's very political. It's like a conservative consistency. This time every single day of the week, people get upset when I don't go live the same day every week because it's like people tune in to see this show at this specific time. They want reliable consistent work. Do you think you present yourself right. to a billionaire that way? You don't. The question is like, the answer is like, you, you seem like the crazy, like crash out, like, yes, you bring viewers and you're, there's entertainment value. You're like, kind of just, you're making my argument for me that I never gave a 
because I feel like I don't belong there. Yeah, you're saying I don't belong there. I don't. Well, how are you going to put blame on Rumble for doing proper business? Like, why would they throw? I, just, I, I feel like other platforms at least put me in group chats to talk. If I had brought kick a hundred thousand views, bro, Eddie's giving us so much money over the over the uh, last year. Um, when I wasn't even a streamer. That's why uh, Kick I made mistakes. Barely... That's that's why Kick is in a is in a bad Kick is in the worst spot it's ever been since it started right now. Because they give money to a lot of crash outs and they give money to immediate views, but they don't think long term. They don't see like who's gonna be consistent. Like, yes, somebody can go up and down and somebody can get like a million views right now doing a crazy video, but can they be consistent and bring in hours of content? Yeah, day but day you, out? no offense. Yeah, but you consistent guys are not even on the radar. I don't know one rumble streamer besides you. Fresh and fit. I mean they they have uh Trump Jr. is killing it. Academics have been doing well on here. Uh, Viva Frey, the quartering. These guys are like, they're not like in the streaming sphere, but they do they do like political podcast content. These guys, like they bring in viewers and they bring in money. Yeah, but they're not pushing the envelope. They're just always going to be at a thousand viewers. Yeah, it, it's it's for a different audience, but that's like you have to, to see yeah, what's going I don't going want an website. office life, bro. I don't think I want an office life. I'd rather get punched in the face, humiliated on the street than have an office job, bro. That's why they don't want to – that's why people like just don't want to work with you. Yeah. Like what you just said. And that's fine, bro. I, I'm a, It's going to be their loss when I'm Joe Rogan level, bro. At the end of the day – you want you, you want to know the real have, thing? Let, hey, let me, one in the chat. If I'm funnier than everyone on Rumble combined, come on, bro. Give them. Do you remember? Flowers. Do you remember? I'm the fucking. You're telling me I went on a date with an underage girl. I'm not the funniest on earth. And that is funny. It is funny to. It's to funny, not but not necessarily for the world. right reasons. But do you I did care. I did. I puked. You puked? I thought you just spit. Yeah, well, it's spit. But a lot of people are like. You puked because you find her gross. No, I puked because I'm going to jail. She was cute. I'm going to jail. That's what I thought. I'm like, bro, dragon bit me again. The dog is getting bro. Do you remember when I approached you with an idea for a podcast last year? Bro, Sneeko. Yes or no? You, yes or no? I'm going to, should I just, I, this is so rude to say to you, but. All right, here we go. You're, you're a really intelligent businessman because Sneeko will be like, Zerka, I know you're a little naive dog. You want to do a 50-50 <laughs> collab? Just be on my stream 10 times in a row till I get a $5 million contract. And then you ditched me. That was genius when what you I, did. How, that how did I ditch fucking you? genius. How did I ditch you? Well, we, we, never, started the, we never started our podcast. If I ditched you, ditch why would I platform the right after he go touches the girl? If I was going to ditch you, I'd be doing this because call right you, now, bro. Because, because you have a audience that gets married young, right? What does that have to do with talking to, to you after getting canceled? Well, I'm just saying, like, to you, it's oh, not a, okay, that big okay, of a okay. deal, right? Is no. it a big deal for you? No, 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 because I, I know that you feel guilty about it. And I know that it was a mistake, right? But but the reason, yeah. like, I, the reason I'm talking, I'm like, I, I want this to be a pivotal moment. Also, I like your community, too. I like the Christian, like, esoteric stuff, like, and, and they care about you. And I'm reading their stuff. They're like, yo, can you just leave L.A.? Can you do the S? Can you talk about well, Illuminati? I, I left LA can you talk about the worse. Vatican? Where, where? I, I, left, I left L.A. and it got worse. Where are you right now? In Miami, bro. I went from IQ to Teen IQ. This is a disaster. You're in Miami? I've been in Miami, yeah. Why are That's we on Discord? Where, like... where are you? Uh, I'm at Mike's place right now, but I've been here for like a week. Oh, you're in New York? No, no. I, I, or, I mean, you were in New York, right? I took a jet from New York to, yeah, I just came. Yeah, what was that private jet? What are you, rich? Yeah. <laughs> no, whose jet was that? What the fuck was that? That was my jet. That's my jet. That was Chris's jet. Uh, not absolutely. I mean, if it was Christian's jet, he would have been in the. He would have been in there with me. But no, Nico, man, I'll tell you this, bro. Your two biggest fans will always be my mom and dad, who who literally don't know how to use technology, and they watch you. Yeah, it's like, cause bro, they literally say Nico is you, uh, without the mental illness, just pure comedy. <laughs> I was like, what the, and they're like, you could be Nico level, and I'm like, mom, dad. You know I have more potential than him, and they're like, "Yeah, but you like you burn out. He never burns out." And I'm like, "Come on, bro." That's why. That's why we, because we could have done a good fresh and fit podcast last year, but it, instead you wanted to do this like it's like it's like you prefer stroking your ego to stroking your bank account. I don't get why. Like, why do you you get off so much on the validation from chat rather than like setting something up long term? And and also we both value pushing the envelope. We could we have that um that synergy available. I've been looking for somebody to do like a, a balanced podcast with. I have the Muslim audience. You got the Christian audience. You know, we, yeah. 
You know, it, it, but instead it's like you would rather like no, run around. Cool. It, it, but why, why are you doing Jack Doherty content when you could be, you know, <laughs> changing the conversation forever? I don't get it. I don't get why you choose that. I'm terrified of looking like a phony, dude. Like if I ever talk about politics when I don't feel like talking about it, I feel like a phony. And, you know, this is my first uh, month where um, I... He glitched out. What a mess. He glitched out. But we don't just talk about politics. We talk about... We talk about... They religion. work for it. Talk about growth. I, I, you cut out. You cut out. Yeah, your your Wi-Fi is bad outside. Yeah, oh, shit. Could you see me? Yeah, yeah. You're better. Yeah. This is like my first month at summertime sales where I passed 80000 in income without working. And I didn't think... I, I always made, you know, I made good money, but it would be like 20 hour days. I never thought you could make, what the? I never thought you can make that much. And then I realized the greatest businessmen on earth do get it passively. They're not live. Hi, I'm Sneeko making money. That's kind of just a commercial for the other stuff. And then, uh, so I'm like, hey, I've been trapped in my room six months. When I have some drinks in LA, have some drinks in Miami, what could go wrong? And it turns out that I'm a loving now or what the <laughs> happened? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, um, so I, miss, I miss getting. Speak, I'll tell you this. I miss getting beat up, bro. Because now that I'm healthy, I'm not on diazepam, Percocet, nothing. Oh, that fight would have gone so much better. No slips or anything. And uh, I, I just feel like that doesn't come my way now. Like I'd much rather be jumped at a bar than whatever the fuck happened yesterday. But it is a huge wake up call that like, the one time Mike, see, six years, he's never had uh, an underage in his house, and with security and a manager and an assistant and everyone somehow fucked up it, it it's like such a huge wake-up call that no matter whose house i'm in whether pandas or whatever i'm checking ids i don't care if i have an entourage i don't trust my manager i don't trust no one around me and also you you kind of switched up bro because what zirka and gary have the most genuine friendship online there's no business there just pure comedy real two friends the highest level red pill getting along that's our that was our relationship you and you literally have him as a contracted manager after saying I got spy up by. I don't, I don't have, a, have contracts with anybody. You said I got spy up by you for having a friend, but now you're because well, you because you, you actually first off I don't have a contract with anybody. Nobody manages me. I like contractually no. Two, you actually believe in the number shit. Do you think I believe in double eight twenty two masturbator? But I, I understand that this is mysticism i believe in Islam I, I bet 100%. you anything i bet you anything you believe in the dragon year now absolutely and not my i believe Lord. i believe Speak that you could not make decisions for yourself i believe in quran sunnah that's it i believe that Speak you before, prioritize ego rather than Sneeko, before on my days off before people hired me two thousand five hundred dollars of numerology reading call for months i was into the numbers for free i didn't even know you could make money i thought it was gary's thing and then Gary kind of got angry, and then uh, I <laughs> it's just a scam. Thought I spread numerology, Gary, but he's like, "You're platforming Felix," and he got all mad at me because I put some kid on who debated him, and he thought I took the kid's side when really I just want to see them argue. That kid's a kid anyway, the emotional. And then Gary kept bringing it up that I'm on that guy's side, so I said, "Man, fuck you if you don't believe me," because I was like, "Oh, Gary's only friend." Every other friend Gary has is under contract. I was the only uh, no contract. We just get beers together. We just or, or we just get no Coca Cola together. We just get food together. Gary and I would talk for eight hours a day. Hundred percent friendship. What you have with them is hundred percent business. It's so not, how the fuck well, it's I business. Get? I mean, yeah, this guy's not like I don't. Why would I? You know, of course I no, want to. No, but I'm saying you, you, you said I got you got you said I got psyched. Yeah, psyched up to believe in numerology. You, instead of Christianity, you started talking about masturbator and, and, and dragon year, and you're like like a grown man. Like what? what no, tiger I, year? I, 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 Enemy I year? What in, are you talking about? I got into numerology because if you just go on YouTube or Google numbers in the Bible, and you'll know what I'm talking about. I know like, yeah, that should ruin my chat forever. I have these like these in here that just spam about that nonstop, and it's never gonna stop because of that. Because because of you getting psyched by the has, has like significantly ruined a portion of my chat forever <laughs> well at the end of the day gary spreads the heart, hardest core red pill message he's he's a good guy he's just a paranoid friend that thinks like yeah he just thinks too much but at the end of the day i don't mind gary making bread off me because this guy is like anti it's like this guy's the only guy i met in this industry that was like that and i'm so genuine that i had a genuine friendship with the guy and you guys are accusing me of being soft that's why i was like what the and that really blindsided me when I'm like, now he's your manager? Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to, I want his help negotiating future deals, right? 
That, that's the that's but, the goal. Yeah, he's uh, Gary's around the clock, doesn't sleep. He's good for that kind of stuff. But uh, when he takes a bite of that, he, you know, when he wants his chunk, he's gonna get that percentage, bro. Believe I mean, me. they're the best. Uh, they're the best managers for a reason. Okay, uh, and let's continue. Actions and put that on video. But a new behavior emerged around this Sneeko time that started to really turn people off from him. He would make unapologetic statements about how much he loved teenagers, specifically <laughs> 16 and 17 year olds, declaring yeah. that he was proud of it and anyone could come fight him if they had a problem. This is even more concerning when you realize the kind of content that Zerka is putting out there. Remember how I said he he was found on the website Omegle, where you can randomly video chat with people from across the world. Well, that website was of course shut down, and a new one called Monkey popped up in its place. For a while, this was all the rage with kick streamers. They would have random people on, quote unquote, roast them and make it their content. Well, one day Zerka and Sneeko are streaming while they're on the app Monkey, and a lot of these people looked very young. So young that I really don't feel comfortable showing their faces I've blurred them out. But John Zerka, without asking any questions, let alone what their age is, will come fresh out the gate with vile questions, all while Sneeko sits there with the face of a hotel room chair enthusiast. What is the mirror behind you? Is there a, like an interrogation room behind you? <laughs> mirror? Does the carpet match the... If you want it to be. Hey, so which Did one the of... the carpet match the drapes? Yeah, asking you, Redhead. Fire crotch. Is <laughs> <laughs> it fire crotch? Yeah. Hey, so... So you think it's real? Wait, hold on. Which one is for me? Which one is for him? Okay, open Don't your mouth. Me. Open your mouth. <laughs> Can you say it? You can't leave if you want to. You Listen, I'm the most interesting guy you've ever spoke to. This guy is the literal embodiment of Mr. Douchebag from the Your Favorite Martian songs. Just the most annoying narcissist you've ever met in your entire life. Even before all this creepy stuff came out about Zerka, I found him completely insufferable. With a lot of all bark, no bite. Claiming to be an ex-bar bouncer and some kind of street fighter. The only fight I've ever seen Zerka in was a street fight, and it was with a fellow content creator called H.S. Tiki Taki. H.S. saw Zerka for exactly what he was, a fraud, and wasn't afraid to let his stream know exactly how he felt. After seeing this, Zerka proceeds to spend his whole day stalking H.S. Tiki Taki around the city, and when Zerka finds H.S., he throws a glass at the girl that he was with. This eventually leads to a fight between the two, where Zerka gets absolutely manhandled. Zerka came fully prepared for that fight, as where H.S. got up up and did it on the fly. While I can't show you the clips because it's so graphic, Zerka just gets pounded, I can tell you from seeing how his footwork was, this man has been in very few fights in his entire life, slipping and sliding on dry concrete. I don't know much about HS, but I will forever be <laughs> thankful for that video. It completely invalidates this macho man alpha male persona that Zerka likes to put off. It seems like the only people that have anything to fear from Zerka are women. You see, when Zerka was in full-blown orbiting mode, he would go on the No Jumper podcast with Adam only under 18. Adam, who is a notorious adult film star, would openly discuss with Zerka how the other adult actresses were uncomfortable in his presence. When you have Adam22 coming to you about how other adult film stars think you're creepy, some Something is seriously wrong. An adult performer told me that I should no longer work with you because you were doing creepy things. I don't know how explicitly, creepy, but I think she just said creepy things or you were following. Creepy or creepy? Look at this hit piece. This is pathetic. I don't want to go full. Bite the on no, drop, you the, without, drop you know, the bitch's name and watch watch this. I'm drop not gonna name and shamer. But yeah, yeah, check it out. It sounds like you've had some strange relationships out. within the this adult creator community. This is so cute. Check it out. Okay. Five years working in nightclubs with women, uh -huh. not one incident. Five, was it four years on Twitch, YouTube, not one incident, not one allegation? Uh -huh. 
Man, those last couple sentences aged like milk. This guy is such a compulsive liar, I don't even believe that he was a bouncer in the first place. He very well could have been, but he's told so many lies that I don't believe almost anything he says. But I do believe in what I've seen. For years now, Zerka has had this reputation and strangely built it into his brand. I mean, the guy sells a course on how to pick up chicks. Extremely ironic considering his riz is sewer water and that he was recently <laughs> banned from Kick along with Heel Mike for okay, hanging out with an funny. underage girl all night being extremely inappropriate. But we're not quite to that point in the story yet, folks, because we're just getting to around the time that John Zerka and Heel Mike met. In the beginning, the kick streaming community was pretty tight-knit. A lot of them would hang out together and create content that way, and they would both frequent streams at Jack Doherty's house. Heel Mike and Zerka, who were extremely like-minded, immediately built up a friendship that would lead into the modern day. Heel Mike is a former Fortnite streamer who has been involved in a large number of controversies, and after being banned from Twitch for saying something along the lines of, thanks to all the kids who gambled, because now he had a fresh new necklace. The ban wasn't permanent, but Heel Mike made the jump over to Kick, where he started seeing much more profit, and he would stay there until being banned recently. In the past couple months, John Zerka and Heel Mike have been making a lot of content together, even frequenting the website we talked about earlier, Monkey, where you can see that even though some time has passed since the Sneeko clip, Zerka has not changed a bit, and Heel Mike is exactly the same way. Hey girl, what's up? What are you up to? Hi. I'd love to eat your pussy. Disaster. I work 40 and 14 at the same time. I'm that n Let me have a taste. Hi, Lord. I'm 13. Yeah, you're gonna get in trouble doing that. You know that. <laughs> Honestly, just don't tell the cops. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What How are you? Right, we're old enough to f underage and get we're away with 30, it. We're 30, but our girls are 12. Yeah, Guys, please look, let me out of the cage. No, 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 look at this. We've got children. Come to Romania, come to Romania. Are you guys in LA? She's here consensually. I want a f***ing girl touching her hair. She looks like she wants me. I want to put some white stains in your red hair on the right. Mm. I want to throw you through your f***ing Motel you need, 6 wall. You need a Jack Harlow in your life, bitch. I want to... You, you're right. I a Jack Harlow in yeah, my Wait, are you filming us to cancel us right now? What's up, baby? You take my what? you take my breath away. You're like George. As you can tell, these two guys are peas in a pod. <laughs> both extreme narcissists with a social media following. A dangerous combo. And sadly, one night this was proven. Heel Mike and Zerka would hit the town, going to various bars. Eventually, meeting up with a girl that they knew and someone that they didn't. This girl would end up being 16 years old. And before even taking her home, they did not care to check her ID. Here is how the night began. This girl's 18? What? I mean, she looks like How old are you? Someone said Zerkin Hill Mike is going to be the single reason Vitaly comes out of retirement early. I don't pay attention. After getting the girl back to their house, Zerka becomes extremely creepy towards her, cuddling with her on the couch, kissing her cheeks. None of them have even checked her ID. Realizing this, a guy who is hanging out with Zerka and Mike decided to bring this to them and tell them that he didn't think she was of age. Zerka and Mike were already talking about getting alcohol delivered to the house. The guy who was hanging out with Mike and Zerka grew increasingly paranoid and began to question the girl on her age. And realizing that something just didn't add up, he brought this to Zerka, telling him they should really check her ID. Zerka begins to have a little bit of a freak out, saying that these things are legal in Canada, which might I add they are not. The man warning Zerka of this quickly replies with, this is America, buddy. And that's when Heel Mike comes walking up. The man also warns Heel Mike of the girl's lies and asks them both to do an ID check on her. Disgusted by the question, Heel Mike says that they are not going to check the girl's IDs and 
proceeds to call the man a couple of slurs. As the night goes on, Mike would make various comments about how Vitaly would never catch him and Zerka. He would insult what he viewed as Zerka's audience coming down on them for not ID checking, and make a number of extremely creepy and inappropriate statements. The criticism from chat would grow so bad that they would eventually end up checking the girl's ID, which turned out to be fake. Believing that they had been vindicated, Mike and Zerka continued to celebrate the night, with Mike ending up posting a picture of himself with an unknown girl in bed, saying, no regrets. What Zerka and Mike thought was a regular old night ended up being their final day on kick. The girl did in fact turn out to be underage. And once the platform of kick was notified of this, they decided to ban both of them for the foreseeable future, if not permanently. <laughs> with kick putting out a statement along the lines of, when it comes to kids, we don't mess around. While I do believe this is a step in the right direction for the platform, there are still many issues plaguing it, especially in the department of creeps. After waking up and realizing that their entire social media career had vanished into dust, they would go in full damage control mode, stating that they were set up by a trusted employee. Zerka and Mike said that they trusted this woman because she worked for Fresh and Fit, finding girls for their podcast, completely trying to flip the blame of the whole situation onto her. They would even record this clip of them confronting her on it. Are you, you're above 18? I'm above 18 on my whole family. Swear to God. I swear to God. Abby, you have been I friends with her? I swear to God, I would not friends? bring this to you. I swear to God, on my family, on my dog, on my job, I would not bring you an underage I trust you because, you know, you're respected in the industry. You work for Fresh and Fit. You bring, you know, you bring bad bitches. You do other things. You, you're a respected person. I don't think you would ever bring us a 16-year-old girl to set us up. No, like, I swear, I, I wouldn't. And you swear to God, she's I above 18. I swear to God, I swear on my job. I swear on my family. I swear on everything. While this quote-unquote trusted employee claims that she swore the girl was of age, some internet sleuths have discerned that she is most definitely not, and that what Zerka and Mike were doing is beyond disgusting. Of course, for legal purposes, all of this is allegations at the moment. I really don't think this is something that's going to result in convictions, but it is extremely disturbing, and the kibosh should have been put on this far sooner. These guys have been going around around for months, making horrible jokes about how they're into teenagers. It was their whole gimmick, outrage bait. And now they expect people to believe that they actually weren't capable of these actions? That this is all some huge misunderstanding and we should immediately forgive them. No matter how much they want that to be reality, it's not gonna be. When even a platform like Kick, founded by stake, propped up with gambling money and deals, wants you off their platform, you are truly, <laughs> truly scummy. And I don't see how any other platform would take you. Zerka and Heel Mike have taken to their Twitters to defend themselves. It seems like the only platform where they're getting any kind of support anymore. And the support they're getting is weird. A lot of these guys want to make excuses for John and Zerka because they've been watching them for so long. They look up to them. But this cause lost them a good many fans, and burned a lot of bridges in the collaboration territory. And it's well earned. Their personalities are awful, what they did was terrible, and they seem to have very little remorse for it. While John Zerka and Heel Mike might have a long history on the internet, I think this is all they will ever be remembered for. A couple of streamers who made frickin' mess. Like, again, you got to see both sides, guys. Enjoy. Uh, hit the like, hit the sub, hit all the notifications, drop me a donation. Like, Hunter M, Adrian R, Tom M. Uh, Bobby, Dylan, Renaissance Press, Brian, Andrew, and Alan. Shoutouts to you, most recent purchaser of Strategist Guide to Seduction. Thank you. Go buy my books at bit.ly slash Helios Books. And uh, if you'd like early access to my content, it's on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the Helios blog. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Especially if you've listened to the end, I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.